guys. Welcome to the Fluid Art Fanatic podcast episode three. Um, very exciting. I apologize. It's a little later than I wanted to get it out. I had this weird kind of allergic cough. Um, it was a terrible cough. It just wasn't constant and I didn't feel bad or anything, but when it came on, it was like this really bad cough. So um, I didn't think I'd be able to get through a podcast with talking and all that um, without coughing and, you know, wants to listen to that. Um, I did manage to make it through a couple pouring videos, which was very exciting. Um, I didn't think I'd be able to do that. So I do have my Diet Coke, I think is what it is, Diet Pepsi, in case. And I still have a little bit, but it's not like it was. So anywho, we're going to do some fun things tonight. We're going to talk a little art. We're going to talk a little fun stuff. We're going to talk pouring. I'm going to do a couple product reviews. So stick around and enjoy. Um, I do have a couple paint dried paintings I want to show you also. If you're listening on Podbean, I apologize for the visuals not being on there. Um, but I have a limited amount of space on Podbean that I can record or that I can upload. Um, I know there's some different plans you can do, um, but I have I do not have the higher plan. So, with that, on that note, if you'd like to support the podcast, I do have a link to uh, my PayPal account if you'd like to do that. Maybe I will upgrade eventually, although I'm kind of torn on that because I like to listen to podcasts while I'm doing housework, and I like to be able to put it on my phone, stick the thing in my ear, and um, get my housework done while I'm listening to a podcast. It makes a world of difference for me when I'm cleaning and I have something to listen to. And I know with um, video podcasts... Um, it uses a lot more phone battery. So everybody's bored already. Let's not talk about podcasts and videos. Um, this hair, my, <laughs> I was brushing my hair today. Thought, you know, I swam. So I thought I probably should put some makeup on, do my hair a little bit so I don't look like I just, you know, cat dragged in, all that stuff. And my two-year-old apparently took off with my hairbrush. So I have a, a wonky ponytail. And I was doing my eyeliner and I poked my eyelid with my eyeliner. If you're looking for perfection, perfect primping, perfect editing, perfect speaking, you can turn me off right now. <laughs> there is no perfection here. <laughs> but there is real. There is real life and real people um, who are not perfect at anything. So there you go. In fact, I had a comment on one of my videos, and I'm not doubting the person that put the comment there. Perfectly, you know, reasonable. It wasn't said with any nastiness or bad intentions or anything and we all have our preferences on videos and her preference was for a highly edited organized video um or mine are not highly edited for many many reasons i think i got into that one of my podcasts so that's what you're looking for look elsewhere give me a facelift for my podcasts <laughs> so anyway off we go um so I did want to show you, well, let's get into the painting stuff here in a bit. I did want to talk about um, something really exciting that's coming to the Dallas Museum of Art. If you're anywhere near Dallas, I'm about an hour and a half north of Dallas. Um, something really interesting I didn't know. Ida, Ida O'Keefe, what was her middle name? Now I can't remember her middle name. I have notes written in sparkly crayon. How fun is that? Uh, <laughs> I didn't write her middle name down. Ida O'Keefe, sister to Georgia O'Keefe was also an artist and um, she has some amazing paintings and most of them were in private collections and such. She never had her own show because Georgia O'Keeffe was quoted as saying, there's only one, there's only room for one artist in a family and it was Georgia. Little sibling rivalry there, a little nastiness from Miss Georgia O'Keeffe, I guess. Um, so her husband, Georgia O'Keeffe's husband, was a gallerist, and she support he supported and um, pushed for her gallery shows and all that. And, um, apparently, Georgia would not let him assist Ida, and she apparently was not able to find um, any other way of having a gallery show, or you know, chose not to pursue that. She taught art, she taught painting, and and did some other things, but um. Anyway, just that, that was really interesting. Never heard of Ida O'Keefe. Um, apparently, they had two other sisters, Anita and Catherine, that were also trained in art 
um, said Anita. I'm going to get it backwards. I wrote the names down, forgot to which one of them, I think it was Anita, did not pursue art at all, but Catherine did to a certain extent. But this is Ida's show, um, and a lot of her paintings, they said, unfortunately, because she sold, she was, you know, just sold to private collections and, and just individuals, that many of her paintings are out there somewhere, and they have no idea where and no way to find them. So anyway, if you're anywhere near Dallas, that, that opens in November um, at the Dallas Museum of Art. I just, I really found that interesting. So if you find that interesting, you know, go to Google. I can tell you more much more than I can. But anyway, fascinating nonetheless. And, and Miss Georgia should have been a little more kind to her sister. Although they said her husband had some roving eyes and wrote romantic letters to Ida. Big story there. Lots of backstory. <laughs> Google if you're interested. It's kind of like a soap opera. The O'Keefe sisters. Maybe they, you know they should make a movie. You have heard of the other Boleyn girl? There you go, your first piece of chocolate. We play the chocolate game on my show and my podcast. I mentioned a movie. Did I already say this? I just paint. I just painted. I just recorded. <laughs> so I'm like, what did I say? Um, anyway, we play the chocolate games like the drinking game, have a treat, whatever it is that you like. Um, if I mentioned a movie or a TV show or anything, you get to have you know, whatever makes you happy. Watch a kitten video. You know, whatever it is that makes you smile. I'm all about making everybody smile. Um, but when the, the other Bolin girl has a movie and a book, uh, read the book, watched the movie, they should make the other O'Keefe sister. That would be fascinating. Who is out there? Any movie producers? I'm sure you're all, I'm sure there's plenty of movie producers watching my podcast, just waiting for ideas. So anyway, but that would be, that would be really interesting. The other O'Keefe sister. Who out there wants to write about, write a book? Okay. So next thing, I'm going to show you a couple dried paintings. Um, I apologize if you're on Podbean listening to the audio. Um, you can always jump over to, to YouTube and just find the part where I'm holding up paintings if you want to go back and see it. Um, this one I did the other day. It will be out, or it was out, um, if you want to see it. I will link to it in the description bar. Um, this is glow-in-the-dark paint, this white um, I could not get the camera to pick it up. No matter what I did, the camera just did not pick it up. Uh, when I turned the lights out, it just was a black screen um, on video and on camera. Um, and I mentioned in the video that it was a little transparent. And this was a scraped canvas. And you can sort of see under here the scraped canvas. So I'm going to have to do some touch-ups on this one because I do like it. Um, it's, it's not as dark as it looks. It is dark phthalo blue deep it's pretty dark but um there's more details to it than the, what the camera is picking up um and i actually messed with it a little bit after the video so if you watch the video this is like a stripe and i did one more swipe over it which i don't like to do off camera because you know i, I don't like to fiddle i'm going to fiddle i want to do it on camera so you guys can see what's going on but um I don't know. I left the room. I went and put my pajamas on, and then I came back. It was driving me nuts, and I did one more little swipe. Um, so anyway, the video ends a little bit differently, but there you go. I'll do some touch-ups on it. Um, I ruined my little ghost. If you watch the video, I, and I do close-ups, there's a little ghost. Oh, no, there's the little ghost. It's just hard to see because it dried. But anyway, um, it's transparent. It dries very transparent, which is something to think about if, I use, if you use this. This is um, Americana Glow in the Dark. I got it at Halloween, but I've been assured by a couple viewers that you can find it at Walmart. Um, is that where everybody got it? I think I had two people mention Walmart um, year round. And the reason I used it wasn't because it was Glow in the Dark. I used it, can you see? Because it's a really pretty color. You can't see, this looks white. Um, it's a very like almost like cream. It has a just a tad bit of a yellow tint, but I wouldn't call it a yellow. Um, so it's just a, it's just a pretty color. So I used it because I thought when it's not glowing, it's a beautiful color, um, and I didn't really want white white. So I thought it was a nice alternative. So I'm gonna try it again. I'm gonna go to Walmart and see if I can't find it. Um, I'll check Hobby Lobby too. See who carries it year round. Um, but definitely on a white canvas next time not on a scraped off canvas that hasn't been painted over. And did you guys watch this one? 
Okay, I, I ended this one and I loved it when I left the video. I think I mentioned that. I really, really liked it. I liked that it. it looks a bit natural, has this little bit of green emerald color, and I thought it just looks kind of earthy and organic. Yeah, I showed it to my husband, and he said it looks like skin. And you know where he went? Right to Silence of the Lambs. It puts lotion on. It takes the lotion out of the basket, and it puts the lotion on. So there you go. Second piece of chocolate kitten video, puppy video, and I looked at it and thought, you are nuts. It does not look like skin. Yeah, it kind of does. Now that he said that, it looks like a biology experiment or a piece of ham that's been sitting out way too long and it got, went bad. I don't know. I really liked this and now I see skin and I see rotting ham. I mean, even this, gonna pick it up sorry the video looks it looks kind of grainy and I'm wanting to touch it like I do my phone to zoom in I don't think that, oop, no that doesn't work it almost look I mean there's something cellular something biology ish <sighs> I don't know. but anyway and you can see I was trying to prove that it didn't look like skin and it wasn't wet yet I mean it wasn't dry yet it looked dry um, but it wasn't dry to the touch. So when I was showing my husband to prove to him it does not look like skin, I um, kind of ruined it. So I'll have to sand it down if I pour over it, which I think I'm going to. Although, you know, maybe I can gift it to somebody who hasn't watched my podcast or heard the heard that it looks like skin. <laughs> Moving right along. Um, okay, product reviews. Let me take a drink real quick. Okay, so oh, I got these. Jerry's Artorama had an insane, okay, this is driving me nuts. I have to stop for a second. This little spot of eyeliner that I decided not to wipe off and I should have when I was doing my makeup is driving me bonkers. I keep thinking there's a gnat on my screen and I apologize if you're watching and you're like trying to wipe that splotch off your screen. It's not a splotch, it's my eyeliner. And can I just say real quick, we're gonna take a trip around I like, not great at doing it, but I like makeup. I think it's fun. I like doing special effects makeup Halloween time. So anyway, I've watched my share of uh, YouTube videos on makeup. And there's this one particular artist who is showing, who's saying that the midline or whatever, mid-range foundation that will, you know, knock your socks off, change your life. I don't know. Somebody I actually enjoy watching but he does use a little bit of um, um, clickbait in his titles, but I enjoy watching the videos. So anyway, um, he got to, he named it, I don't remember what it was, but it was $42 for an ounce, which is not insane when you're talking, you know, high-end makeup. I use e.l.f. e.l.f. on the shelf, so, you know, I do not use high-end. But um, anyway, but my, my thought was as I was watching this and thinking, $42 for an ounce. You know how much paint that would buy? You know how much pouring medium or Floetrol? How many ounces $42 would buy? Just a thought. I'll pour paint on a canvas and not on my face. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. And I do enjoy makeup, but I'll, I'll take the I'll take the L. So anyway, Jerry's Artorama. Um, had an insane sale for their anniversary. And I did an unboxing and I got just kind of spur of the moment. I don't know because everything was so ridiculously cheap. I thought I'd try their little Soho um, studio wipes. And I was really pleasantly surprised. I thought they were going to be kind of like baby wipes, you know, nothing special. And they actually smell, they don't smell bad. They smell good. They don't smell chemically, you know, like some of the paint cleaners do. Um, but anyway, they, they do a really, really good job. I've done a couple little cleanups where I've gotten paint on something I didn't want paint to be on. And it worked really, really well. Um, and it also says it can be used on hands, brushes, tools, safe on glass, wood, oil finishes, and more. Um, 
perfect for spills, drips, and splatters. We pour, we have plenty of spills, drips, and splatters. I'm not going to use it on my thumb because I have a cut and I probably should have worn gloves. But let's see. I haven't used it on my hands. And actually, let's see, nails. This is Nova Color, which is the hardest paint that I have found to get off my skin. It's just, I don't know, it sticks worse than any of them. Oh, yeah. Okay, that was the first I've used it on skin. Um, I didn't read that it could be. So anyway, it does a nice job. So if you're, you know, in a hurry or you have some stubborn paint, it's doing really well getting that Nova Color off. And like I said, Nova Color, I can take a shower, I can take three showers and still have Nova Color on me. So that's good to know, especially if I need to, you know, if I'm going somewhere and I want paint all over my hands. I'm just at home and I, you know, showered and it's still there. It doesn't bother me. But, you know, if you want to look nice, not have paint all over your hands, it's a good option. Anyway, and it does really nice on, like like I said, I, I've done some quick cleanups. Um, I don't remember exactly how much they are, full price. Um, I remember thinking I wouldn't want to use them all the time for a lot of purposes because it would get expensive. But just for quick cleanups, really, really nice, really handy. Um because I have some brush cleaner and stuff for, for, you know, material and stuff, but it's a liquid. So these are really, really handy. I also got on that haul Creative Inspirations paint in various colors. And you can see the bottles get kind of wonky. It's my word of the year, I guess. Wonky. I've been saying it a lot lately. Um, when you squeeze them, they have this little pop off. Ooh, that's not screwed on. What in the world happened there? I must have taken the thing off and then not screwed it on right. Okay, so anyway, that could have been a disaster. It has these little tops. That one doesn't want to come off. Um, and they're more of a heavy body. I would probably even call them a heavy body paint. But they mix beautifully. I If you saw my unboxing... Um, I was a little bit nervous just because I kind of got it spur of the moment on their on their sale without knowing anybody who used it. I've never used it before and I got quite a bit of it. So I was like, I hope this is good or I've just spent a lot of money. Well, it wasn't even a lot of money, but I've spent money on paint that I can't use. But um, I was really, really impressed, mostly in the way it mixes. Um, it mixes beautifully with Floetrol and it mixes beautifully with water. And I use some basics matte medium. Uh, mixes beautifully with that. In fact, I was mixing some purple um, today for the video I did. And the cup, I got it too. I filled it really full um, with paint and medium. And I know for a fact that as full as I had that, um, with other brands, I would not have been able to mix it. I would have had to find something to pour it in and mix it um, in something else because it was so full, I had to mix very, very carefully. And I know there's some brands of paint that you have to mix and mix and mix. And this, you you really don't. You mix and it just, it smooths out. It doesn't clump before it mixes in. It doesn't do anything weird. Um, there's no vigorous mixing. So if you have a hard time mixing for any reason, um, this is a great brand. I, I find it, it just is wonderful. And it also pours wonderfully, which is important as well. I don't have any problems if you get cells with it. Um, I've done swirls where I don't want cells and it, it does well for that. So um, I'm really happy with it. The one, the only thing I have, I'm having a problem with, this is the Pearl Essence. And I'm finding it doesn't play as well with others. I don't know if it's snobby Pearl Essence. And it wants to say separate, or if it's the um, Mr. Darcy of the paint world, not a piece of paint, um, and it's misunderstood. <laughs> so, or user error. I don't know, but I've used it a few times. Mm, excuse me, and I've just, I don't know, it, it sinks like a white wood, like um, type, um, type. It sinks like titanium white does. But, um, I don't know. In fact, I used it. This is what, this is the white in this. I want it to focus. Um, this is really shiny. 
this was all uh, not the green. Yes, the green. I'm not sure. I don't remember what the green is. But the two main colors are um, Creative Inspirations. And it does have a shiny kind of... Um, but anyway, shiny finish. It has not been varnished. Um, I don't know. It just... it almost does like a ghosting which I usually like but um I don't even know I, I don't even know what it kind of dulls everything out it doesn't ghost in a way that highlights the other color and kind of blends the two nicely it almost just soaks up the pigment I mean I don't know how else to put it I know it literally doesn't suck up the pigment um it's a vampire acrylic paint. But um, it just, I don't know, I find that it dulls it. And and don't take my word on this. This is not scientific fact. I've, I've used it maybe three times. Um, so I'm going to use it again, and I'll, I'll let you know. Um, because, you know, like I said, it could be a little bit of user error. But yeah, so far, not excited excited by it um, and what it's done. It, it always tends to disappear and just... Kind of go blah. Maybe I should swipe with it or something. If you've used it, this pearlescent is a beautiful color. So I would like to get it to work and figure out what um, the best way to use it because it, oh, it's really pretty. Um, like I said, I, I really, really like it. So, you know, I don't know. Nobody wants to listen to um, <clears throat> allergic coughing. So, Pouring. I've had some thoughts that I wanted to share with you guys. Some questions that don't have real answers. But I've been thinking. Um, because the process of pouring, and some of the comments I've had on my YouTube channel, um, and I asked on a few videos for people to comment on where they would stop. I fiddle. I tilt and I fiddle. I'll be the first to admit. Um, Sometimes I overfiddle, but I, I enjoy that part of it. And I've had some comments because, and I've asked, where would you stop? Would you have stopped somewhere else? Um, would you like it at a certain point? And I kept going. I wanted to know where everybody would have stopped. And if you watch any of my other videos, watch any of my pouring videos, feel free to let me know. You, know, you can do the timestamp or whatever and say, I, you know, you should have left it. Should have walked away. Um, because I think it's a different, it's a, totally different process of watching a video, watching somebody else do it, than it is when you're creating. And so my thought is, because pouring is such a fast medium, you know, compared to traditional painting with a brush. Um, I do pastels. I've done some pastels over pours that I wanted to enhance. Um, Pouring, you know, flip cups, especially flip cups and swipes, you know, even swirls compared to other mediums. It's very, very fast. I mean, most of my videos are probably under 15 minutes for an entire painting. Um, and it has to be, you know, you can't you can't extend this process out for a really long time because at some point it starts to dry and it starts to, you know, it starts to you know, get to a place where you can't fiddle with it. And it will eventually, you know, I've fiddled with them enough. I've, I've ruined enough that it will eventually turn to mud. You know, you mess with it too much and they will mix and, and you'll have mud. So you're very limited on time. And because some of, because some so many of the processes, um, the techniques are incredibly fast and they create such beautiful, beautiful effects without much fiddling, that, you know, you, you're done and you're over. And, you know, the effects of art on the brain and the slowing down of the brain and the focus. And my thought is, as somebody who has a very hard time slowing everything down, um, and if you watch my videos, maybe, you know, let me know. Don't spare my, well, don't be mean. Don't want to spare my feelings. Um. Sometimes I hear myself and my talking is just, I, I just, I don't slow down well. Physically, yeah, put me in a recliner anytime. 
but mentally I notice that with pouring I don't have the time to slow down now mixing the paint sort of does that but um, I don't know something also about the way I'm talking and I love making the videos and I love talking to the people on the other side of the camera um, hoping that if you hoping that people will watch and there will be other people on the other side of the camera and I love hearing from people who watch the videos I love some of the fun comments that I get um, so it's really that interaction, even though it's not at the same time, is really, really fun. And I enjoy that. But I'm wondering if the talking is also changing the way I react to the art. And if it was a slow process, if you could extend that, you know, 10 minute, 11 minute pour, um, you know, if you could just slow down time. I don't mean fiddle with it or anything, but if you could slow down time and make it last longer if it would do something different if if it would if I fiddle with it more or less or see it in a different way because I know when I do pastels I set it up I get to a certain point and I stop and then I set it up um, on my fireplace and leave it where I'm going to be walking by it several times a day and I look at it and I stare at it and I think, what colors does it need? Do I need to add? Do I need to walk away? And you don't have that time with a pour. And I don't know. I don't think there are any real answers to this. But I would love your feedback. You know, what you think. And maybe, <clears throat> excuse me, my table. Because I think only on like three occasions, well, probably more than that, but not often, Am I able to do more than one painting a night? I paint when my kids go to bed. Um, and I'm usually tired when I start. And even though it kind of energizes me, I know I need to go to bed. I, I'm always thinking I need to get done and go to bed so I can sleep. <laughs> I need more than three hours of sleep. So I would like to hear from those of you that do several paintings at a time you know, your first compared to maybe your third or fourth, because I heard somebody, um, I read somebody's comment somewhere that said the first pour is like the first pancake. Your first pour of the night is always going to be your worst one because you're just getting into the groove of it. And I thought, if that's the case, then 95% of my pours are my worst pours. <laughs> because I don't, I don't keep going. I need to go to bed. I don't have... I don't have lumps of time. You know, some people might do it once in a great while and have lumps of time, do several, and then not do any for a while. Um, I do it a few times a week and do it, do one a night. So <clears throat> anyway, I would find that really, really interesting. So let me know, do you do one at a time and then you stop or do you do several? And, you know, do you think that affects or, or just be, you know, just think about it next time. Um, you're pouring because I don't know. I, I don't, I've been really pondering this for a couple weeks now. Um, and, and what, what influence it has on our art, not in a good way, not in a bad way, just generally speaking, does it have an influence on our art that we don't, um, paint for an extended period of time. I just realized I did not switch the laundry and I have to wait till it's dry to go to bed. My husband needs work socks. Speaking of brains not slowing down, my brain has not slowed down. I'm thinking about laundry. I do not think I switched it. Well, anyway, I'll be up later than I thought. That's okay. Or I'll just dry his socks and put the rest in the dryer tomorrow morning. That'll take probably 20 minutes. Nobody cares about my my laundry. But would you like to see? Shh. Don't tell anybody. Mount laundry. <laughs> but I get to do first thing in the morning. Yay. Okay. Back to what we were talking about and slowing the brain down. So, <laughs> anyway, I have crazy person written. You see this? In my, in my, um... Glittery crayon. 
because sometimes I, I hear myself and I think, you just sound like a nutball. Um, the other thing is I've done a few paintings um, and I'd like to do more where I record it and don't talk and I put music to it because um, I wanted to see after I started thinking about this, I wanted to see if talking was using a part of my brain that, you know, my full focus wasn't on the painting, but I really haven't found that there's much difference. Um, but I might do a few more to music and just see, because I, I really didn't um, see a lot of difference. But I have thought, I wondered if, you know, meditation before painting, um, or some kind of just purposeful, maybe some other art, um, maybe being creative before, well, you know, before I'm ready to paint in a different way, you know, I, I'm zentangling or something I can do while everybody's awake and there's, there's movement and activity in my household. Um, and then going on to paint because I, I know, um, what's her name? Michelle Taberge. She is on YouTube, um, wonderful artist, beautiful art. Um, anyway, she was talking about being creative and I forget what she was doing. She was doing, I don't think it was music, maybe it was writing. Something that was creative, but not her typical, not art, not, not visual art, not painting, um, but creative in a different way. And she said when she got to the studio to paint, she found that she was already in that space of creativity. So um, she said she was much more productive. Um, I'll have to find that video and watch it again because I, I hadn't thought of that. That just came to my mind um, while we were talking. So, um, you know, maybe some other form of art. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, would make a difference. So um, anyway, this is what I've been sort of thinking about. It's been um, and it does make me wonder, you know, especially when it doesn't make me question my art, question my paintings, but when people say I would have stopped at such and such time, um, sometimes I agree with them. Sometimes I go back and I'm like, yeah, that would have been a good place to stop. Sometimes I think that was a great place to stop, but I also like where I ended up after I fiddled. And if you go back to my early videos, some of them were longer. I was using bigger canvases. And I need, I need to do some more of that. I have a really big canvas, but I need to get some more like 16 by 24s. Um, and I fiddled a lot more. And some of them were like 25 to 30 minutes. So I should go back and watch those and see how different they are compared to some of the really fast flip cups that I, I've been doing lately. Um, because I don't know. I, where was I? You know, I've kind of lost um, but yes, when somebody says I would have stopped here and I agree with them or not, sometimes I don't agree at all and I don't like, but you know, that's okay. Um, I think, you know, would I have seen that? There was one I did with blues and oranges and everybody said they saw mountains and a river of lava. I mean, everybody, every comment, my husband said, why didn't you stop there? You had this perfect core. At that moment, oh, well, maybe not perfect. He didn't say perfect. He should have. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, um, it was really pretty, and I, I did not see it at all. So was it the difference of being a spectator versus being the person doing it, or was it because... I wasn't slowing down and it, everything was happening fast and I knew I had a time limit. And I knew, you know, I needed to, you know, get, I don't know. I, if you have answers, if you know somebody who gives grants to psychologists, brain scans for people who are poor compared to brain, brain scans for traditional art that takes longer, very worthwhile cause. I'm sure that will not be happening anytime soon. So, Without any neurological testing forthcoming, um, you know, would you love to hear your feedback or, or what you think of it? Or do you just think I'm insane? That's okay, too. Um, 
I'm gonna look at this real quick because I'm seeing if I missed anything. But um, I think that I think that basically covers it. The whole slowing down thing, not slowing down. Um, you know, viewer, spectator versus the person doing it. You know, we can all be. What do they call that? Sunday afternoon quarterbacks. Something about a chair. Somebody's gonna comment. My mom is a football person. She would know. What do they call that? Sunday afternoon? No. Recliner quarterback. I don't know. The people that judge the people who are on the field. The people who are just sitting and watching. So, spectator versus person who's actually doing it. And what your thoughts are on how, how being fast. Especially if you're, well, not especially. Because either, either way, you know, you're is just as valid but if you do other mediums that are slower you know what difference do you see or do you see a difference maybe you don't maybe this is all me or if the, this is your um, only medium you know do you think that the speed with which it happens um, plays a part I know resin is somewhat similar because you have you have a very specific um, limited amount of time to work with resin however when I've done resin and I use a heat gun to move the resin, it's a very kind of old kind of uh, feeling. I, you know, it moves slower. It moves more like, um, I don't know how it moves, but it moves slower. And in a re watching it, it's like one of those most fascinating, most how they, what do they call it? Relaxing, satisfying. The most satisfying videos to watch. It's very satisfying to move the resin with the heat gun. And it does kind of happen so slowly. And it's more like, it's not like gel, but you know what? More like gel than like water. So it kind of happens very slowly. It's like this blooming of a painting. Um. So I find that very slow, very calming. <clears throat> in a way that I don't find pouring to be calming. It, it's relaxing, and it certainly gives me that creative outlet, but um, I don't know, just in a different way. So I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts, if you have any. Um, if your thought is, this is just, um, comment that too. Check the links in the description for, I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> oh no I'm gonna dry sock but I'm gonna go to bed I don't I don't want to forget um <clears throat> so um anyway check the description box for links I'll have to rewatch this to remember what links I said I would put there <sighs> should have been taking notes while I was doing the podcast so this has been podcast episode three of Fluid Art Fanatic. You can find me on Podbean and on YouTube. I join Twitter, but I keep forgetting that I join Twitter. I'll put that link down there and tweet me if you're on Twitter. Whatever it's called, I don't know the Twitter lingo. Um, send me a tweet. Send me a twit. Let me know you're out there if you're on Twitter because I, I keep forgetting that I'm on it. And I would like to use it because it's kind of a fun little thing, even though I've never really done it. Um, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. We have a Fluid Art Fanatics Facebook group. That is um, a lot of fun. So if you'd like to join us there, feel free to do so. Um, I'm in some of the other groups, so hear me there. Um, this podcast was, I started this podcast specifically for community. Um I've watched some knitting podcasts, thanks to my mother who sent them to me, and um, I love the knitting community. In fact, it makes me want to knit. I keep saying I'm going to start knitting. I should go to Hobby Lobby. They have a fun community. I don't know why it feels that way, but it does, and I thought, and they have lots of podcasts. There's a lot of knitting podcasts, and a lot of them are not about knitting, but it builds community, and um, I'd like to build our 
acrylic pouring community and fluid art community into something, you know, that feels a little bit more like a community. So look for me on the Fluid Art Fanatic Facebook page or on some of the other groups. Say hello. Um, if anybody wants to start a thread on the Fluid Art Fanatics group about anything I've talked about, you're more than welcome. We have very few, actually, we have only one rule on the in the group, and that is just to scroll past if you see something you don't like. And we haven't had any problems with <clears throat> any drama. No drama so far. So anyway, I will let everybody go. But thanks for watching. Look for my podcast on Podbean if you like to listen instead of watch on YouTube. Um, hit subscribe and look for the links in the description bar. We will see you next time with some pouring fun, probably, and next time on the next podcast. See you later, guys. Happy pouring.